Good evening, you absolute legends, or good morning, or good afternoon, if you're watching on the replay, really means the world. Joining me if you're here live, or if you're joining me on the replay on YouTube, or Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or anything like that. Um, obviously, we do this every single Monday. I've been doing it every single Monday for about 10 years, although I must apologise, because um, I've had a couple of weeks off. I actually got a last-minute audition um, last, well, last Monday, um, so that it meant that I had to learn lines Monday night for an audition on the Tuesday. So apologies that I wasn't live last week, but hopefully you, um, I don't know, you had a week off, you relax, you're rejuvenated now, you're back, ready to roll this week. Um, but it went well. Thanks to everybody who sent me good wishes for that as well. Um, it went really well. I don't know if I'm going to get the role. It was for one of the biggest <laughs> biggest roles that I've been up for. Um, I don't know. I honestly sort of like, I don't know if I see myself in that part or not because it would have meant being a really big actor's boss. And I don't know if I hold that much gravitas to be that particular actor's boss in a TV show. But you know what? I gave it my all. Got on really, really well. And um, you never know. Something else might come out of it if I'm not right for that. But keep your fingers crossed and I'll keep you updated. I'm going to dive into the uh, Facebook comments first of all. Just see what's going on on Facebook. Let me know what you are doing this week. Let me know what you are planning. You know, Maybe there's just that one thing that you've been wanting to do for a long time. That one thing you've been putting off. That this week you're like, you know what, sack it. I'm actually going to face that task and do it. That might literally be reaching out to a casting director for the first time that you've not emailed before because you've been a bit scared. Might be reaching out to an agent that you think is maybe out of your league and you thought, oh, just not going to do it. But this is the week that you you decide. You know, you are worthy. You are going to do it. Let me know in the chat what you um what you are doing. Nat, you just said, didn't you, that you um you're shooting a new self tape scene. Um, to get in front of an agent who, you, who you've said has you know, opened their books for new actors. So uh, that's super, super proactive. Uh, Rich, good evening. Hope you are well. Josh says he auditioned for Emmerdale again on Friday and auditioned for a theatre show on Sunday and got the call tonight saying they want to offer me the role. And it's very exciting. will open a lot of doors for me. This came from the director and producer of my last play, who is the director on this new play. Josh, I hope you get Emmerdale as well, mate. What a week that would be. You know, new theatre gig. And Emmerdale. Josh's first role was on Emmerdale. Josh, it's quite interesting because I'm going to talk about something that you you took part in with me that enabled you, uh, you know, sort of played a big part in you in you getting that first TV role on Emmerdale. Um, I'm going to talk about that tonight because this Saturday I'm doing something super exciting and there's already 711 actors signed up for this, right? So if you're not on the list to do this you're missing out or there's at least another 711 actors who are going to get access to something that you know could put them ahead of you um so do go and grab a place on this so let me just go over to um my web browser uh and what do we need to do I've, i mentioned this last week um, but i'm running a free training for any actor who is looking particularly for their first role on tv um, or their next role. If you've got, I would say, do you know what? It doesn't matter, actually. I guess say if you've got less than sort of five roles, this is super applicable to you. I use the strategies that I'm going to be going through on Saturday morning to land three TV roles in the last six weeks um, and that audition for a, a really big TV show that I just mentioned a minute ago that I don't know if I'm going to get or not. Um, so these strategies are like just as applicable to my career now, nearly 40 TV roles in as they were before I'd even got one role. Um, it's taking place Saturday the 29th of July. That's this Saturday, 10 a.m. till 11.30 on Zoom. So it's a 90-minute training. It's on Zoom. It's 100% free. It's like real actionable content. You no know, bullshit, no fluff. It's like real strategic, actionable content. If you want um, to get a seat, it's completely free. If you go to actonthis.tv forward slash training, you can just pop your email address and your name in and it will send you your Zoom link literally instantly, okay? So so if you're here on the, on the call live now, go to actonthis.tv forward slash training, pop in your details there and literally straight away, you will have that Zoom link. You can let me know in the chat that it's, uh, that it's come through. Keep that Zoom link safe um, and that will be your link that you're going to join us uh, with on Saturday morning. Now, to be transparent with you, my Zoom account holds 500 seats. Now, I'm not making it up. 711 people have already got a seat on this training. Now, I don't expect everybody to turn up. You know how it is. Lots of people decide they're going to sign up for something and they don't go through and do it. It is getting to the point, though, now where, you know, I don't know if I've got 800, 850, 900 people signed up for this by the weekend your show up rate's roughly 60%-ish. So it would get to the point where 
some people might get locked out of Zoom. So you lot who turn up on here like on a Monday night, legit, or you lot who listen on the replay, you know, you're obviously a bit a bit more in the inner circle about some of this. Um, my advice for you would just be to click on that Zoom link on Saturday morning at about quarter to ten. So many other people are going to be clicking on it at like 10 o'clock to get into the room when the training starts at 10 um, or at like 5 to 10. If you just click it at quarter to 10, you're going to beat everybody else, to be honest with you. So it just means that you're going to guarantee yourself that you get into that training. Um, some people will inevitably be locked out if, you know, I don't know, I've got five days, haven't I? 20 people a day sign up, that's another 100. So um, it might get to the point where it's chock a block, but... It's worth just getting up a little bit earlier on a Saturday, clicking that link at quarter to ten. So let me know if you're here live, if you're going to be there. Um, I honestly, I will over deliver on that training and I'm going to also announce something that's super, super exciting. I don't know whether to give you a sneak peek of it tonight for those people who might never have, um, have heard of it before, what I'm going to do. Uh, let me know. Josh, you've, you've been through the training. Alex, you've been through the training. Should I give people a little sneak peek of what I'm going to announce at the end of that free training on Saturday morning or not. Let me know. And I will, uh, I might, because you're here live. You guys are here live. Or with people watching the replay. Ultimately, if you tune into this, you're on the inner circle, aren't you? Like I said, you're the people who really, really step up. So um, I might, yeah, give people a little, uh, a little sneak. But I'm going to ultimately announce something at the end of that training that you can get involved with if you want that's like super 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 in depth it's ultimately a program where i will work with you for 12 months to help you land that first cv job if you are struggling to implement what i talk about on that training on your own you can absolutely take what i talk about on the training go away do it all on your own if you think you've got the motivation the knowledge and the you know the accountability to yourself um you can go away and just you know implement everything that i talk about if you want 12 months of literally your hand being held and dozens of hours of coaching um i'm going to announce something at the end of that training that just 100 actors can get involved in um we only open the doors to 100 actors a year um so yeah that's super exciting very very excited about that um faye said she missed us last week thanks faye i missed all you lot last week i say i was just i was just lay lay on my bed with line learner just learning those lines over and over and over um, do you know what I found was good, by the way? You know, because like during during the last couple of years, we've all ended up getting self tape buddies. Um, you know, you might have that one person in your life who will read in for you on self tapes, and you read in for them on theirs. Um, what I do now that I never used to do before before we started doing self tapes so often is um, I jumped on Zoom with Petch as well, just to run my lines for this in person audition for like ten times, so that you know we weren't filming it, but we were just running the lines and just playing around with it. Um, and it helped massively, helped absolutely massively. I walked into the room for that audition really calm, knowing that I knew it like the back of my hand. Um, between Line Learner, that app, great app, I think it's about three quid or something like that. Um, it will read all your lines for you so you can practice against yourself effectively. Um, and jumping on Zoom with a buddy and just running those lines 10 times you know, before you go in. I'd recommend it to everybody. Don't learn lines on your own, honestly. Got, gone are the days with the technical advances that we've got where you need to just li learn all your lines on your own in your bedroom. Um, what's this, Josh? Oh, and you're also in a theatre show next week for the Off Cut Festival. Josh is just in everything right now. Faye says you're watching new stuff on TV to see more of what's out there and to connect with more people in the industry. Says, but I'm also looking out in the BBC Writers' Room for scripts I can film for a procedural role, self-tape stuff uh, of my casting type, feeling productive. That's bang on the money. Faye, that's exactly what you um you should be doing um definitely um let's have a look nat says is the sound funny is it funny for anyone else what's the sound like for you folks let me know jennifer good evening as well thanks for uh being here and rich has just booked his seat on that free training yeah honestly um it's gonna be really really good that training training rich acts on this.tv forward slash training if you want to get your uh get your spot on that um indy's been put forward for doctors nice one indy Zoe, how are you um it's all happening. It's all happening. And people are saying I should show behind the scenes of, uh, I should show a sneak peek of um, of the full first TV roll fast track program that I'm going to be opening the doors to on Saturday morning. Um, I might do that in a little uh, in a little bit. First of all, let's just recap uh, for those people who might have missed last week's uh, Act On This member only Zoom call with the one and only Mr. Steve Hughes. I'm just going over to the website now. 
Um, for those people on the audio experience, you won't see this. Sorry, but I'm on the preview page of atsonlist.tv. Um, if you miss this session, folks, and you're not a member of atsonlist.tv yet, go over to atsonlist.tv. Check out the previews. You can literally watch um, a two-minute preview of what was included in this call with Steve. Steve is a BAFTA-winning director, director of Casualty, uh, Miss Scarlet and the Duke, Death in Paradise, The Last Bus for Netflix, Creeped Out. I mean, just massive, massive shows. Um, and he's also like just one of the nicest guys in the industry. Like, he's a, such a champion of new talent, of looking out for you know actors again, looking for their first TV job. Um, he loves networking with actors on social media, on Twitter. Now it's called X. I don't know what. It's crazy that, isn't it? Um, what is a tweet going to be called now? An X. I think it is, honestly. It's all, uh, and I'm going to have to recreate the act on this Twitter list and call it the act on this X list. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Elon Musk is changing the name of Twitter to X. Um, but Steve is an absolute legend, um, and he walks through literally step by step exactly how you, you know, should approach directors in TV. Because it's not all about casting directors, they're a huge part of this industry, but I've landed so many jobs in the industry now or auditions for stuff directly from directors who have called me in of recommending me to a casting director to say, hey, I want to see Ross for this role. And the casting director will then arrange that casting, but it's the director who's wanted me in. Same with writers as well. Um, the more conversations you can have with people in this industry and the more relationships you can you can build the better your rapport is with people in this industry the more value you can add to everybody's life the more opportunities you will get because people just want to be around you so um so yes yeah, steve walks through getting on his radar basically the right way there are lots of wrong ways to do this but we talked in depth about getting on people like steve's radar the right way here's two minutes of what you missed and then if you were there um let me know what your biggest takeaway was and let me know if you've, uh, you know, Steve's actually doing the edit for Death in Paradise for the next couple of weeks, so mid-August, so it's not a good time to reach out to him. But let me know if you maybe implemented these tactics to reach out to somebody else um, in the industry since last week. He's a BAFTA-winning TV director. His credits include Doctor Who, Waterloo Road, Casualty, Miss Scarlet and the Duke, and he's literally just back from shooting Death in Paradise. It's Steve Hughes back on Act On This. Steve, it's awesome to have you back, mate. How are you tonight? I was working on uh, a BBC news show called Liquid News, which was an entertainment news show, and the head of BBC Drama at the time came on, and he was a guest. My wife uh, said, give him a copy of the last short film that you did. And he watched it, liked it, gave me a break on um, Doctors. And then I've been doing this ever since then, so that's since 2005, and it's now 2023, and I'm still getting away with it. Casualty, lots of casualty. Saturday night's episode, it was directed by Steve. It was the 75th um, anniversary of the NHS. Can you tell me what's happened today? I, can't, I think I can't hit me, and then, and then there's one. The acting was actually very different as well, and the way you guys approach the scripts for this episode. How did it all work? The story is, is written. There's a writer. You know, it's all uh, all the story beats are there. But instead of having dialogue written, we have we give the actors um, space, um, and you know, it's encouraged. Like the stuff that we would suggest, that you know, the ways that they would go, and you shoot it almost like a documentary. What do you think yeah. would be the best way to get on your casting radar? The way you should treat social media is. And the way you want to court somebody, as my mom used to say, um, yeah. is you, you, you want to woo them. I'm thinking of tweeting you my reel. What should I check first before I hit tweet? I'd rather see two minutes of really good stuff than five minutes worth of baggy stuff. What advice would you have for people going in for the first time in a long time? It's good for you to be relaxed when you're in the room as much as you can. And remember that we're as nervous as you are. So, so you know, we are friends in the room and we're going to make a story together. In terms of connecting on Twitter, do you um, have to be aware what's on your profile? Because like I have a lot of comedy stuff on there. I think people who've got comedy experience think differently and maybe ah. faster than more dramatic actors. Has there been times in your life as a director you've just felt shit where work's not been coming in? Like, what, what, How have you dealt with it? Be kind to each other. We're, we're, we're all out there um, together, whether you're the directors, actors, you know, support each other. Um, and, you know, you it's, it's a much nicer ride when you travel together. If you want to listen to the full, well, or, or watch, listen or watch, you'll get access to a podcast version of that and the video only version as well. Um, then uh, get yourself an access on this.tv membership. You'll get access to the full chat along with hundreds of hours 
of all of our previous chats, really over the last sort of two years, we've roughly got like a two-year archive in the members area right now. Um, anything older than that, I tend to try and replace with a new feature. But you've literally got dozens of features with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, and producers in TV. Um, literally just there at your fingertips, telling you exactly how you can have more success in this industry. One thing I love about that clip there is what Steve was saying when it came to him sort of breaking into the industry. You know, he was directing like a factual news show called Liquid News. Um, and yet as a passion, because he really wanted to make films and, you know, do drama and actually, you know, um, direct fictional stuff. It was his wife who pushed him into saying, listen, just give the the head of the BBC was coming in for an interview on the news show. Just give that that head of the BBC a copy of your latest short film because he was making a load of short films as passion projects on the side. And he did that. He, he, he basically took that five seconds of courage. He deployed that five seconds of courage and gave him the, the short film. And then that head of the BBC gave him a shot at directing an episode of Doctors. And that was literally the start of Steve's career. Now he's a BAFTA winning director. So just, you know, think this week, how can you deploy five seconds of courage? What are you going to ask for that you think might be a little bit cheeky? Um, I know an actress today who reached out to Des Hamilton, um, great casting director, you know, again, a BAFTA winning casting director and incredible guy. There's a session with him in the members area on that's on this right now. Um, one of the best we've done, actually, that was an absolutely stunning session. And she just asked for something and then got it. I mean, literally got it almost straight away. And it's an opportunity to be in a really, big, a really big drama um, as a really good role, like not the lead role, but sort of the lead role sidekick um you've just got to ask too many people are not asking for what they want so come on like you know you've got to do it the right way you can't just be like hey you know i have no talent i've put no work in whatsoever i've got no show reel i've got no headshots give me a job like you know you have to be able to back up the ask but you know if you feel you've got something to offer you know start offering it <laughs> otherwise people might not know that you know that you even uh, you even exist face says the biggest takeaway from uh, steve's session was that you won't catch him out on film scores yeah steve also has a slightly sort of like savant style knowledge of film scores and composers like a photographic memory where you can say a film any film of the last like 80s 90s particularly that era um, and he will be able to tell you exactly who scored it and the names of songs and stuff like that. So a lot of people have been trying to catch him out on Twitter and they've not done that yet. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you, Faye. Alex says he loves that, that Steve prides himself on making the whole experience positive for everyone on set, which he absolutely does. Um, he's just a really supportive guy, Steve. We showed a tweet. You might have heard me in that in that um, trailer there. I was talking about you know times when you just feel shit in your career because we all have them. You know, without a doubt, you all have doubts and worries and you know sort of uh, confidence crises now and again when things aren't happening or you know you've done 12 cell tapes and you haven't booked a single job <laughs> that was me last year it was the only year 2022 is the only year where I didn't land um, an acting role on screen I landed thankfully a lot of voiceover work and a lot of voice acting work but I had about Honestly, must have had 13, 14 quality self-tapes that I genuinely thought I did a really good job of each. Did my best anyway, just did what I could do. Didn't get a single one of them. I was like, what the hell is going on? That's the only year in over 10 years where I haven't booked multiple jobs. Um, and then, like I say, this year comes along and then you you know, you know book three in a month. So, um, you know, it's sort of like that's restored my faith in myself <laughs> a little bit. But you all have those moments where you feel like shit. And I showed a, a, a tweet that an actor had put out on Twitter or an X that a uh, an actor had put out on X, and um, they was they were like, "Look, my self confidence has took a massive turn for the worse. I feel like I'm I'm depressed. I'm drinking too much. Like you know, the acting's just gone to shit, really." And Steve didn't know this guy and just reached out to him. And was like, "Listen, I've watched your show reel. It's good. Like, keep hustling, buddy. Like, you know, something will happen." So he's just a really pure guy, Steve. I think so. Everything's very positive um, when you're around him, Alex. So um, I like that you took that away from that mate, and hopefully you'll get to uh, you know you'll get to. Work with him in the future. Zoe says, um, what's this, Zoe? You use what you learned to reach out to... Mi oh, from, from Steve's session, to reach out to Mickey Jones. He's already read my email, feel on top of the world. Mickey's a legend as well, another fantastic director 
um, who's just a real champion of actors. Again, there's a podcast with Mickey in the members area. If you've not already listened to that, you need to listen to that. Faye's waiting on a response from an agent about when to pop in for a meeting. It'll be a week tomorrow, uh, which she hasn't heard. Shall I call the office or email them? I'm thinking a call. Um, I'll have a response there and then, but then I don't want to be too hasty. So will an email be better? Um, it, it it depends. So in terms of you have, if you've not had a single response in terms of they've not said, yeah, we're going to meet you for a coffee um, already, then I'd give it sort of two, three weeks just so they've got a chance to, well, two weeks, I'll give it two weeks. So they've got a chance to, um, you know, process, process all the rep requests unless on their website it specifically says, you know, give us six weeks or something like that. Sometimes they will explicitly say how long to wait before following up if they get a lot of rep requests. But if it's been two or three weeks and, um, you know, yeah, you've not heard anything. And for you, it's like, you know, make or break in terms of you need a yes or no from this agent before you're going to be happy to approach other agents. Maybe this is like the number one agent that you want right now. You feel you're a great fit for them. Um, then, yeah, I'd give it a couple of weeks. And I would just make a really quick call. I always like to just have, uh, to just know where I stand, basically, in all areas of my life. So um, just a super quick call. And you can, you know, you can be really nice. So listen, I'm, I'm really sorry. Just take a minute of your time. I dropped a rep request through two weeks ago. Haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I was just making sure I got the right email address. It, I, I sent it to blah, blah, blah. Um, if I've not heard anything, does that mean that it's not going any further? Or do you guys need more time to look at stuff? And they're just going to be nice about it. They're not going to be like, oh my God, Faye, I can't believe you rang us and like you tried to actually push your career forward. How dare you? Um, I, I, that's what I would do, to be honest. Um, otherwise, you know, you could send another email and another two weeks goes by and you're in the same place. For me, I'm like, action, I need to be able to move on. Um, so, uh, so yeah, be brave. Be courageous. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Cordelia says, I need to become more prominent in my online presence. Cordelia get yourself out there um if you i mean to a, just a place to start when you're building up you know any kind of presence in this industry if you just want to basically absorb knowledge on a daily basis get to know who's who it is absolutely twitter or as we now call it x um if you go to act on this.tv forward slash twitter um you can download a list of 57 casting directors uh, casting directors casting assistants and casting associates that i think you should be following um on twitter um and that'll just start you off basically, you know, so you're following the right industry people and then just, you know, five minutes in the morning, scroll down your feed, have a look at what's going on in the industry, add value to conversations. You know, it's a town square cocktail party, isn't it? Twitter. Um, so, you know, everyone's invited to the conversation, add value uh, before you ask for stuff. You know, I'm all about asking, like I said tonight, but make sure that you are giving value first. Um, and that's just a great place to, you know, sort of like have your work seen, make sure you set your profile out. You've got your spotlight link in your bio you've got your showreel pinned as your pin tweet that's the very first thing people will see when they go at your profile um your headshot is your picture um and yeah before you know it you know you have you know a few hundred actors following you you'll be you know on top of the game in terms of what's going on in the industry you'll be hearing about stuff um and you've got a great platform then to actually put yourself uh, put yourself out there and um, talking about agents lots of people are mentioning agents now and replies to agents and that sort of stuff um I've got a fantastic agent joining us tomorrow night for this week's member only uh, Zoom call. I've not got a trailer to play out for you yet. Normally I record a video trailer um, because um, Helen, Helen Kelly from International Artist Management, an incredible agency in London, they rep some massive, massive actors. Um, but they also rep actors that weren't always massive. They, they rep a lot of actors who they took on when they just saw great, promise within them you know great sort of like uh potential and they've really helped them build incredible careers and so helen kelly is the agent i've got on tomorrow night i'll just show you um international artist management's logo i think i've got it somewhere hang on hang on don't know if I have. I don't know if I've labelled it right. It could be any. <laughs> it could be any of these things. Let me take you back over to the website because uh, then I'm then I'm not playing out the wrong uh, the wrong thing. Uh, let me just show you the schedule. So 7:30 p.m. tomorrow night, we'll be joined by Helen. She's ace. I'm going to record a trailer with her in the morning, so I will put a little video trailer out um, from about 10 o'clock tomorrow. But there it is. There's a the logo. I am. Um, but yeah, we've got a live mastermind uh, with Helen tomorrow night, 7:30 p.m. We're ultimately going to be. Pulling the curtain back on the entire agency, like how it works. Helen's in charge of the global film and TV department. Um, 
they also rep lots of other creatives at IAM as well, um, not just actors. Um, they rep people for voiceover. I think they might even rep like directors and writers and stuff. Um, but they've got a fantastic actors department um, and they work genuinely globally. A lot of agents in the UK are like, yeah, we're global, but like, you know, they don't really sort of, you know, they don't really focus on the American market. Um, IAM really do. They've got a lot of actors on both sides of the pond, British actors who work in America quite regularly as well. So that'll be quite interesting to talk about. But we're going to pull the curtain back on the whole agency, how you would approach Helen for rep. We're going to dive into three of her current clients and why she signed them, one of them being our very own. acts on this member, Michelle Jerram. Um, huge shout out to Michelle, who actually put me in touch with Helen to get this sorted out. Helen, um, I mean, Michelle, you, you, you all know as a member of Acts on This TV for the last few years, um, she joined the acting industry quite late at 48 years old. She left the police, was a policewoman her whole life, um, and then decided she was going to follow her dream of being an actor at 48. By 50, thanks to the hustle she put in, everything she learned at Acts on This TV and, you know, the classes she was going to, everything combined, um, helped to land a regular, like a lead regular role um, in police drama Granite Harbour. She's just started to film, I think, the second season of that now as well. Um, so it's just a great example of, of an actress who went from like literally, you know, newbie to series regular in like just two years. <laughs> like That's crazy. Um, so we're going to dive into Michelle's career a little bit. Helen's going to talk about why she signed Michelle and then we're going to look at two other clients. We're going to go through lots of questions about approaching the agency and then we're going to take your Q&A as well tomorrow night. That's going to be 7.30 p.m. till 9. Don't know how we're going to fit it all in in an hour and a half, but we will do our best. If you want to be there, um, actonthis.tv forward slash live. Go and check out the schedule. Sign up for a membership. You can get a monthly membership if you want. Just try the community out for a month. I promise you, you will not want to leave and you'll probably want to upgrade to an annual membership after that. Um, you get lots of bonuses if you do that, but... Um, it's just going to be a wicked session. So let me know if you're in the market currently for an agent. Maybe you've not got an agent right now. Maybe you're looking for a move of agents. Or maybe you've got a northern agent and you're like, you know what? It's time to get a London agent. Um, obviously, Helen is uh, IAM is, is, is based in, uh, in London. Um, so let us know sort of where you're at with representation right now. Um, and we'll, um, you know, we can ask you the questions that you, uh, we can ask questions tomorrow night that you, uh, you need answers to. Um, right, let's have a look. So, um, what else is going on? I'm just going to dive into the comments. We can do some Q&A tonight as well. Should I show you just a little bit of behind the scenes of what I'm going to be doing on Saturday? So, like I said, Saturday, um, I'm going to be doing a 90-minute training for anybody who's looking to get their first or next TV role fast. Okay, I'm going to basically be breaking down a blueprint, really, that I rinse and repeat weekly in my career that has honestly led to consistent, like really consistent audition opportunities. Um, and now almost 40 TV roles in the industry. Three, like I say, in the last sort of like, I keep saying the last four weeks, but a couple of weeks have gone by now. So like three in the last six weeks. Um, I did a, a show called ICV's, um, uh, what's it called? After the Flood. <laughs> ICV After the Flood. I did Netflix's Fool Me Once, um, a great show with Joanna Lumley and Michelle Keegan. Um, and me and Petch actually flew over to Ireland to film BBC Three's Wreck, second season of Wreck. It's a horror comedy uh, for BBC Three. Um, and like I say, and then I got, ended up with that audition last week um, for this new drama. I can't really say anything, but it's a big show with big names in it. Like what I'm going to teach on Saturday really, really does work if you implement it in a laser focused way. You've got to really stick to the blueprint, not veer off it, and like. And, and do it consistently. If you literally want to dabble in anything in life, you're not going to get anywhere, really. If you want to dabble in your acting career, you're never really going to get anywhere. You've got to absolutely commit to this. Um, but at the end of the training, I'm going to open the doors um, to a, a, an entire coaching program that I only launch to 100 actors just once a year. If you don't get in it, this year, you will literally wait 12 months before I open the doors again because um, it's a huge commitment on my part and Petchy's part. We take 100 actors um, through a, it's a roundabout, what is it, like a 16-hour pre-recorded uh, coaching program. That's like video content that you will be able to watch in your own time. There's a, um, a huge workbook that goes along with it as well. There's then another four hours of guest coaching from people in the industry, people like Peter Hunt from Hollyoaks, casting at Hollyoaks, Mickey Jones, who we spoke about before, great director, Tony Blake, an incredible headshot photographer, Chris Stone, great showreel producer. Um, there's all kind of resources 
um, that we supply to you. Lots of tools um, and t- sort of technology around email, email strategy. Um, I know a few people have been asking in the chat, like how do people, you know, sort of track emails? Um, we dive into all of that. It's like far too complex for me to talk about on a uh, on a session like this. But that's involved in the program. And the whole program is called First TV Roll Fast Track Ultimate Edition. This is the 2023 edition. Um, let me see if I can show you this without giving everything away. Uh, I think it's this tab because I'm just working on the uh, the registration page now. But ultimately, and I really mean this, it is um, the only, like seriously, the only proven program on earth to help you land your first TV role in record time. Like I've taken two previous groups of actors through this, a test group a couple of years ago and a, a group of just over 100 people last year as well. Um, and we've sort of like tweaked the program ever since. Anyone who's had a previous version of this, by the way, if you got in in 2021 or 2022, you're going to get upgraded to the 2023 version absolutely free of charge. Um, I don't know if you've noticed in our private Facebook group that we have for this program that I mentioned that. But yeah, anyone who's had a previous version of this, I'm going to upgrade you to the latest version for free. And um, I'm always about over delivering and making sure that people get massive value from everything that I do. This is not a cheap program. This is quite an expensive program. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody gets, you know, sort of like the best, absolutely the best service possible. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to give this registration page away on Saturday. I can't send you there now, but we can have a little look at it because, um, it takes you through, um, five, sort of five main modules. Um, let me just go through the modules here. So here it is. So it says introducing the first TV or fast track five module program. It says first TV or fast track revolves around five core modules designed to take you from stuck to screen in the quickest time possible. And we ultimately walk you through really getting laser focused on you, who you are, where you fit in the industry, you know, your marketing strategy, all of your marketing materials, making sure that everything's congruent. And then we make sure that you know how to get that material in front of the very people who are ready to buy it now. Not just sending out to every Tom, Dick and Harry, but like very, very specific um, people. So uh, module one, we call day player diagnosis. And that's really to help you, you know, get crystal clear on your day player type. These are the roles that so many people will be playing for the first three, four, five, you know, um, TV roles. The day player roles are the roles where you'll have maybe between one and three scenes in a show. Um, a few day player roles, there's a few people who've been through this program, like Gemma Green, legend, who ended up with five episodes of Coronation Street for a, for, for a first TV role. So sometimes it's a little bit more, but most of these day player roles will just be the, uh, you know, the one or two episodes. Um, we then, module two is called Serial Drama System, where we look at all of the serial dramas so that you know exactly which shows you need to be targeting specifically in order to land your first TV role in record time. Module three is called What to Shoot, where we really drill down into the exact kind of footage that you should be shooting so many actors i watch they're reels and they're pointless i don't want to sound harsh but so many actors have reels that are just when they've not had a single tv job job and i look at their reel and i go this is so unhelpful to any of the casting directors that would give you your first tv job um a lot of actors' reels are in a really bad state because they just don't know where they fit in the industry and they just got you know they've done a student film or whatever um, and, they, and that's the only footage they've got. And they go, oh, well, I've just got to use this then rather than going, actually, this is not serving me at all. This is not to my casting type. This is not useful for day player roles. This is not useful for any of the serial drama casting directors. Um, it's just pointless. So we really drill down into what to shoot. In module three, module four is my favorite module, all about email. Um, in terms of, you know, the tools to track emails and to, you know, really understand that in depth and really write emails that Cassandra says we'll look forward to opening. We cover that in module four. Module five is called Mindset Shift. So many answers get in their own way. So uh, this is a, uh, a module really about sort of breaking through your limiting beliefs about what you think you can and can't achieve in the industry. So the five main modules, we've then got these Bonus sessions. Tony Blake is probably, in my opinion, the best headshot photographer in the industry. We've got a session with him about headshots, a session with Chris Stone about showreels. Peter Hunt, the Hollyoaks casting director, comes in to do a session on implementing this entire blueprint to basically get in front of him to land your first job on Hollyoaks. Mickey Jones, there he is, the legend. Coronation Street in Emmerdale and EastEnders director talks about implementing this blueprint in order to work with him. Um, it's not just that, though. You will get five weeks. You'll get another 10 hours of live coaching from me um, between August and September, the middle of September. So you get another five two-hour coaching sessions. Um, they're taking place on the 23rd of August uh, for five weeks. Um, so you'll be able to literally jump on and ask your 
you know your questions you know personally see for you like how you would implement this program um these are some of the success stories maybe i should play one of these out um we've obviously had a lot of people go through this program and like dozens have now landed their first tv role i might play you one of these but there's nick dutton he didn't land just one he landed two jobs one on the bay uh, that he's just filmed last week he's filming a new itvx comedy in a couple of weeks as well Catherine giorgio um she landed a great episode of emmerdale um, after you know coming back from having a two-year break after the industry she just couldn't get any auditions at all um implemented this blueprint landed a role in emmerdale really quickly david hadn't had a tv audition in 10 years did first year on fast track now he's had two tv roles um there's just so many people josh there's josh the legend um landed his first uh job in emmerdale and josh i really hope you get that uh, that job you just went for in Emmerdale on Friday, mate, as well. That would just be uh, insane. I mean, there's just loads of success stories. There's people from the Facebook group. There's just dozens and dozens of people now um, who have landed their first CV job. Um, and then you get bonuses as well, guys. You're going to get 12 months support from me in the Facebook group. You get access to the Ultimate Contacts database. Previously, the only way to get that has been by spending 279 quid on an annual membership to act on this. But ultimately, we give you every casting director, casting assistant, and casting associates email in the industry. That's the second bonus. Um, and you also get, for anyone who's not a member of Acts on This, you get a serial drama coaching bundle this time as well, which all you guys have got anyway. If you've got the previous version, I'm going to upgrade you to this. Uh, which is just another six, uh, so another 12 hours of coaching from um, just incredible casting directors um, and directors and actors who are working in serial drama all the time. And then there's a, a limited bonus as well where we're going to do an exclusive Zoom Q&A with BAF the winning director, Mr. Jordan Hogg. Um, that's going to be literally for the first 20 people who sign up. So there's a little sneak peek of what's uh, of what's on offer at the end of Saturday's training. But even if you don't go for this, um, the training on Saturday, I promise you, will just be invaluable. If, you, if you've been banging your head against a brick wall and you're like, listen, you know, I, I know I'm good enough to land my first TV role. I don't know why it's not happened yet. No one's opening my emails. I'm getting no replies. You know, my showreel doesn't seem to be effective. I don't know if my headshots are right. Ultimately, if you want your handheld for 12 months, only if you're going to work, though. I don't want you in the group if you're just like, oh, you can all do it for me. Like, it requires work. You know, we, we have to meet each other halfway. Um, we will show you exactly what to do, but I can't do it for you. If you are really like committed to land in your first CV role or your next CV role within the next 12 months, I would love you to be on um, on that program. But doors are going to open up Saturday morning um, after that free training. So if you've not got a seat on that free training, go and get one, actonlist.tv forward slash training. Um, or if you want, I mean, you know what? It just depends. If maybe you're like, you know what? I just want to do that program. I'm not even, I'm not available to do the training on Saturday morning. If you go to actonlist.tv forward slash first, you can actually get on a waiting list that I put together for people who missed out last time. It's here. So actonlist.tv forward slash first, F-I-R-S-T. Some more testimonials there. But if you um, put your name and email in there, um, let me know. Like I might just be able to guarantee people places. If you can't be on that train and you're like, look, I just I am committed and I know I want to do that program. Um then I can maybe let people in before I even open the doors, if you know what I mean. Just for you lot who are here on a, what, a Monday night at nearly 10 o'clock, like, I, I genuinely appreciate people's commitment. Um, so if you're like, listen, I just really want to do it, um, let me know or drop me an email, ross at actsonlist.tv. The cost of the program, to be completely transparent with you, because it's a year's worth of coaching, it's not cheap, it's 747 quid. It was going up this year. Um, to be transparent with you, I let people in last year at 747 quid on the proviso that this year it would be going up to 997. Um, but I just thought with the economy going to the wall, it's probably just the fair thing to do would maybe not be to raise the price this year. Um, but I promise you next year, if things, you know, if the world's not imploded, um, this program will be 997 or even 1297 to be honest with you just because how how sort of impactful it is um lots of people have made two three times their money back when they got in at 747 so um there is a payment plan you can do it you can break the payments down into three um installments over 30 days each 30 days apart um 
it works out a little bit dearer um, by about 50 quid or something like that. So there's three a three payment plan of 265 a month over three months. Um, so you can do that. But um, but yeah, just to be transparent, like I say, it is a uh, it is a commitment. I understand it's a financial commitment, but it's because it's a huge commitment of time. Um, and ultimately, 25 years of my life and how I've landed every role practically that I've got without sounding, you know, like a look at me, look at me. Um, I implemented these strategies like I say, to land those three roles that I've just done. And they were over seven grand in fees. So it's 10 times back I've earned in a month what I'm asking for for a place on that program. And I'm going to give you 12 months support. So it's all happening on Saturday, folks. Um, but yeah, maybe I might play out. Who's it? I wonder if I, maybe I should play out like one of the new testimonials. Like I wonder if I've got like Nick's testimonial just to show you what people think of the program. It is super, super legit. Um, I promise you it's... Um, you know, I'm, I'm literally, my reputation is everything. Like there's so much shit sold in this industry um, for 10 times what I'm selling that program for that will just do no good to you whatsoever. How many people are posting in the Facebook group at the moment about scams, by the way? Some bullshit like, oh, LA, you know, it's like something like 10 grand or whatever. Oh, we'll take you out and get you to meet casting directors and directors in LA. What a load of shit that is. If you're a UK actor... You need an O-1 visa to work in America. That will set you back at least five grand. And you won't even, unless you've got massive success in this industry, America won't even let you pay for that. They just will not let you have one. An O-1 visa, the, the actual sort of you know, technical term for that is an alien of extraordinary ability. So alien to the country, obviously, not an actual alien. <laughs> um, and what you have to do, you have to put all kinds of like press packs together, showing where you've had press in the UK, how you know your ability is extraordinary compared to the other 10,000 people who want to apply for an O-1 visa that year. And I think it's so disingenuous, these companies selling fame to people in the UK who don't really understand the industry in America, because you just it doesn't matter who you meet out there, you won't get a job because you won't have an O-1 visa or a green card. You know, you won't be a member of SAG-AFTRA. Like, it's just so pointless, so be careful what you're getting sucked into. If something looks too good to be true, it probably is, especially when it comes to the LA Hollywood kind of uh kind of thing. So um yeah, just be careful what you know what you're seeing out there, folks. Um right, let's have a look. What else is uh is going out? Alison says she's really looking forward to Saturday. Alison, I cannot wait to see you uh, see you there. Faye's starting saving now for next year. Faye, I'll see you on it next year. Um definitely Indy said he's got his place for Saturday can't uh wait to see you there uh see you there indy um let's have a look uh i was on the first run of this is it worth re-registering nick you're going to get access because if, if you got in on the on the beta test the first zero fast track um you're getting a free upgrade to the 2023 version mate so don't worry about that yep you are um you are on it you are on it already i'm looking after people i'm not like it's what i love about the program it's like so many other things you do in the industry like you go to a class what happens well you just leave don't you and that's it they don't help you out any more than that um as part of this program you become part of like a family basically of a couple of hundred actors who are already in that facebook group who have been through what you are going through they've you know been stuck nick let me play this nick had not had a tv audition in 24 years i know that sounds fucking ridiculous but he works in theater no one is seeing for TV. Let me see if I've got this, right? I'll play, I'll just play out, right? I think it's only like three minutes or something. This is Nick's experience of his acting career before he did first TV or fast track and now since he's done first TV or fast track. Um, let me just play you this. I, I love Nick. He's just a legend. Like I say, he's now got a job on the Bay and Go Ed, a, a new ITVX uh, comedy. But here's Nick's experience. Before first TV role fast track, the problems I was facing was that I wasn't getting in the room, I wasn't being seen for castings, I wasn't in with a chance on anything really. I was writing to casting directors but never being seen. Um, I hadn't had a single casting in 24 years for TV. I was being seen for theatre work um, occasionally, um, but I just wasn't getting seen and that was frustrating me. Since first TV role fast track, the results have been that I'm starting to get seen for TV roles. Um, in fact, I've just shot for The Bay for ITV. Uh, I'm playing the role of Chips opposite Andrew Dowbiggin. And in two weeks, I'm going to shoot Go Ed for ITVX. It's a new comedy set in Liverpool. I'm playing the role of Jensen. And I've also signed with an agent, LJP Management, Louisa Jane Palmer. So everything is onwards and upwards. I think 
probably I'd, I'd exhausted all options. I'd looked at what else was out there and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't see anything else that was being taught about how to approach this. So I looked at the testimonials on the website and I could see people were getting their first TV roles and I thought, I should be getting that. Why am I not doing that? And so I thought, screw it, let's just do it. Let's try it. Well, there lots of things I liked about the course already. Uh, the, the main thing was the simplicity. The modules, they're really easy to follow. Uh, you can go at your own pace. And I also used the app. It kept, you can do the course in an app. And I found that really easy to follow. And you could tick off what you've done and complete what you've done. And I really enjoyed finding out about how to find out more about the business. Um, no one really teaches you that. Well, the three things that I really love about it are the community. The community is made up of so many people that are after the same goal and there's a real camaraderie with that. It feels like everyone's wanting to get their first TV role. So when you see someone get it, you're just like, yes, you've got it. And it means you really want to start working even harder to, to get that first role. The second thing would be about knowing your casting type. I think we really focus on that and getting laser focused on that really helps you with the third thing, which is your email strategy. Um, so when you're contacting casting directors and agents, you really know what you're saying and what you're doing. And there are some little tools within that that I think with the emails are really game changing. I suppose a natural concern is the initial outlay. Um, you look at it and you go, it's a pretty hefty chunk of money. But I suppose when I thought about the investment, I thought, well, with the first job that comes in, I'll have paid that off. And so having done my first job and going into a second one, I now realise, well, I've more than doubled my money. So it's a great investment. I suppose what surprised me most was the amount of contact that I had from Ross and Petch, the community manager. It's about, it's about how hands-on they are. You, you've got questions. We've all got questions naturally and you've got fears about certain things throughout the course and they're always answered within about two or three days and it's amazing how sort of quick they are to respond. I was really surprised about that. What I'd say to someone on the fence is if you're prepared to put 100% work in and do everything that they say in the modules, follow the blueprint, don't veer off it. I mean, they, they're quite good at bringing you back on, on course. Um, then this is for you. I mean, you will get results. It sounds a bit cheesy like I'm trying to sell it, but it's not. It's, I, I would genuinely say, do what they tell you to do and you can't go wrong. Oh, I'm just going to come back on camera before it gave away a URL there that um, might take you to the registration page because technically it's not open yet. Um, but yeah, that was just Nick's experience. Um, you know, it, it's amazing like seeing these people literally go. And Nick's experience was like two decades of nothing, two decades. I'm like, God, what you could have achieved within two decades if you just knew how to really put yourself out in the industry, like properly, seriously, professionally. Um, it's priceless. Like you could have, you could have literally done in twenty in twenty years, twenty four years of not being seen. Holy shit! He could have had fifty TV jobs. He hadn't, didn't have any, but hopefully now he's got plenty of time left on the clock. Nick, he'll go on to um, you know to have great success. But yeah, I just love it. It's literally my most favorite time of the year. Getting people um, into that program, you know, spending that entire 12 months with them. And I always say 12 months, it's longer. The people who did the test group a couple of years ago, um, they are still in the group and they still will be. Like, you know, I always say, I have to put a caveat on it saying it's, it's 12 months, but in the grand scheme of things, it's like basically until I, I cark it. So as long as I'm alive, you're going to be part of the fast track, the fast track family, basically. Um, so yeah, lots more news um, about that on Saturday. Um, Let's have it. Kanke says, so happy for Nick. This course is gold. Thank you, Kanke. That's amazing. Josh is saying, yes, Nick. Brilliant news as well. Yeah, Nick's crushed it. You know what? Nick's been really laser focused though. And also Nick, without giving it away, Nick actually lives in Europe. But he's still, a lot of people would use that as an excuse not to try and work in the UK. But Nick just flies over on the, you know, the two hour flight from Barcelona or wherever, wherever he's staying at the time. Um, and films his jobs over here. Like a lot of people would be like, oh, I can't put myself out to cast directors in the UK when I'm not even in the country. Yes, you can. If you implement these strategies properly, 
and you, you know you you understand how the industry works of course you can do that like there are literally no limitations if you're prepared to put the work in you know and it is work like i say this program is not for people who want to dabble it's not at all it's for people who really want to get stuck into um you know actually making a, a, a transformation in their life and their career for the rest of their life um because what you learn you will be using for the rest of your life as well like i say still to this day i started using these tactics around probably 2012 2011 2012 we're over a decade in and i'm still implementing this stuff um, and i'll even show you on saturday i'll even show you emails that i sent out to a casting director just a month or so ago that led to a self tape that led to a job um over in ireland um i still you know utilize these strategies today so i cannot wait to see people on that if you want to get a free place on that training that's on this.tv forward slash training um go get it so what uh, what time has it got seven minutes um Let's do a bit of q and I'm going to throw it open to you. What do you want to talk about for seven minutes? What issues have you got in your life? Um, how can I help you? What questions might you uh, might you have? Um, I would love to. Uh, I would love to help. Or just what have you got? Ex- what have you got planned for this week? Just let's sort of share some exciting, positive stuff as well to try and motivate other people. What thing are you going to do maybe after tonight that you might not have done otherwise? Maybe something on. Maybe just seeing Nick there, going from two two and a half decades of nothing to two jobs in a month. Um, maybe that's inspired you to go, you know what, if Nick can do it, I can do it. So what are you going to do this week that's, you know, going to just put you one step ahead of the competition a little bit? Because so many people, honest to God, um, will quit tomorrow. Like, sounds a bit harsh that, doesn't it? But every day, someone woke up this morning in this industry and will not um, be in the industry tomorrow. I don't mean they're not going to wake up tomorrow. <laughs> that's a bit morbid. I mean, like, they've just had enough. They've just got, it's not for me. I don't have the tenacity. My the skin isn't thick enough. Um, you know, and I'm going to quit on my dream or they've accepted a job. And I get it why people would do this. I really, really understand this as well. Like they accept a job for 30 grand a year because it's going to give them the stability that they need to maybe just enjoy themselves a little bit more because it can, you know, let's be honest, like there's pros and cons to this industry. It can be a bit shit, can't it, when you're not working? Um, And maybe they've had enough of that uncertainty. But like, you know, I can't help thinking they actually just sold their dreams for 30,000 pounds today. That's it. If someone came up to you and said, Zoe, what do you want to do? Oh, well, I want to be a filmmaker. I want to write playwright. I want to be an actress as well. And they went, well, how about you forget all that? I'll give you 30 grand a year for the rest of your life. And you forget those dreams. It's a bit sad, isn't it? If you go, yeah, all right. Okay. And I get it why people do it. But I think a lot of people walk away just before they're about to make it, just before they're about to, you know, pop off a little bit and they're going to have a breakthrough. I don't mean like make it as in millions and millions. I mean, they're just about to make a living out of doing this. It's very possible to make a living out of the acting industry, particularly if you throw voiceover in the mix as well and voice acting. There's a lot of that work available. Um, You know, commercial work as well. Um, You know, even even like, you know, when you're going, well, I don't even have any any commercial work right now or voiceover, like medical role play, 200 quid a day, you know, get involved with that. You can make a living out of acting. It is tough, you know. It's not quite as stable as going, right, I'm going to go and work for, I don't know, Microsoft. I'm going to get my... 30k a year and that's all i'm gonna do like but i think the highs are a lot higher than the highs at, at, at jobs like that um so yeah there will be people tomorrow who aren't in the game so like stay in the game if you can um more trees said just had a self tape for a tv series so excited amazing good 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 keep us posted on that alex is going to self tape a new scene with andrew lord in this week to send out another acts on this member nice one alex um let us know how that goes mate make sure you post that in the uh, in the Facebook group, Cordelia is looking at getting a show reel because she doesn't have one right now. Cordelia, make sure you go and watch. If you're a member of Acts on This TV, make sure you go and watch uh, one of our show reel surgery sessions um, before you shoot anything for a show reel. I'll just very very quickly show you where you'll find that. If you click into the members area um, and you go into your premium membership, um, scroll down to the very bottom of the dashboard past all the other features and you will find these very colorful looking things here we keep a year's worth of these in the members area at any one time every quarter we do one of these with in my opinion the best show reel producer in the uk mr chris stone we just did one on quarter two 2023 just a few weeks ago where we play out five members show, show reels from acts on this we give an eight step formula away for how you can absolutely create a banging show reel that's actually going to lead to auditions and work um they're quite long sessions. They're a couple of hours, but please go and watch one of those before you shoot anything. It's just going to really give you clarity on the kind of material you might want to shoot and also the quality of it as well. 
Um, you know, you're going to see what other people in the industry are sending out to casting directors and agents. It'll give you an indication of where your stuff might stack up right now and where you might want to need to work, you know, put some more work into certain areas. So go and check that out. But good on you um, for being uh, proactive on that score. Have you covered actors not contacting uh, casting directors due to strikes? So, Kanke, let's talk a little bit about the strikes. Okay, so right now, obviously, the strikes um, are are making life difficult in America. Basically, you know, for the industry, um, the you know the writer strikes, the actor strikes in America um, are all SAG AFTRA strikes. That's their acting union over there, a bit like Equity over here for us. Um, but to be honest with you, they, the SAG AFTRA have no jurisdiction whatsoever in the UK. So even if I was a SAG AFTRA actor, um, they cannot make me strike in the UK. Like they just don't have the jurisdiction to do that. Okay, you might choose to potentially if you want to. Um, but they can't make you, okay? And really, you know, any of the strikes right now are only affecting UK shows that might have, like, a head writer that is American. So, for instance, like, I just did a job called Fool Me Once, a new Netflix show um, with Richard Armitage, Michelle Keegan, and Joanna Lumley. Um, it's a great drama. Their lead writers, um, well, the, the show's creator, Harlan Coben, and his daughter, Charlotte Coben, um, they're American. They're absolutely going to be part of the um, the Writers Guild of America. Um, so if that show was like halfway through and hadn't been fully written yet, that is filmed in the UK, that would probably cause problems. Danny Brocklehurst is also a writer on that show. He's UK-based. Um, so I don't know if he could maybe have written stuff. I don't know. I mean, it's quite political, isn't it? You don't want one writer going, oh, well, I'll carry on and you can strike. Um, shows like that would probably have difficulties. But all other UK TV shows right now, from my knowledge, what I'm aware of, what I'm reading and what people are telling me, there's really no issues, you know, as long as they're written in the UK, their actors are in the UK. Um, it doesn't matter if their actors are part of SAG after. Like I say, they don't have to strike if they don't want to. Um, so it's not causing a load of issues. It'll, it'll never cause issues like, you know, for Coronation Street, Hollyoaks, Casualty, Doctors, you know, those kind of shows, you know, because they're just not not entangled within within all of that. Um, I don't know if, if the strikes might spread eventually and equity might get involved. I've no idea. Um, but right now, I don't think there's much point practically. I just mean on a practical level, there's not really a lot of point in UK actors worrying about it. I'm a practical optimist. And I'm like, well, you know, what's the point right now of me actually worrying about it and stepping back from being proactive? Like I say, I just auditioned for a massive TV show last Friday um, with a huge casting director in, the, in this country. Robert Stern was casting it. Um, and it's an entirely UK-based production with a UK writing team. Well, it's one writer. He's the, crea the creator and the writer, you know, UK-based. I don't think he's part of the Writers Guild of America. Um so I can't see it being an issue for so many shows. So just, you know, on a practical level, I'm not saying I don't stand by, you know, the people who are striking in America. I think they've got a really good point in terms of, um, you know, just fair pay from the streaming services and stuff. You know, streamers are streaming shows literally in every country in the world now, like Netflix. And are they paying residuals based on that? It's questionable. I don't know. Um, I would say that I feel I've been paid fairly for every job that I've done this year. Um, I don't feel that I've been exploited at all. Um, and I don't feel that the pay structure is different to how it has been ever in my career. So I wouldn't have any qualms right now going, I feel hard done by, because I don't. I, everything I've, I've been paid has been well above equity minimum. Um, you know, the rest of world buyout on all the contracts that I've had um, has been decent. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't feel that, you know, are oh, done by if I'm honest with you <laughs> but it might be different in the states okay you know I don't know but um but right now don't let it put you off writing to people who are casting predominantly UK based shows with a UK based production team there are casting directors I would say people like Sophie Holland for example is a good example of this she casts a lot of American based stuff big 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 stuff I can see this being a real headache for Sophie bless her um she must be having a pretty difficult time of it right now because a lot of her projects are transatlantic um, you know, but other casting directors who cast locally in the UK, um, I'm sure have still got, you know, a lot of work on. So, um, yeah, don't let it hold you back. The worst that can happen is, you know, again, you get a no or would not doing anything right now. 
I'd still, um, I would still shoot my shot, if I'm honest with you. Um, let's have a look. Nat says she's rummaging through the scripts on BBC Writer's Room and doing some voiceover auditions. Would love any tips on setting up an audio drama reel. Audio drama is quite different to voiceover. So your main, your main money in voiceover, Nat, is commercials, corporate work, and documentaries. Um, drama, in terms of like voice acting, is very different, and it requires quite a lot more... Uh, mastering in terms of like the the sound editing you know in terms of sound effects and you know you know you're ultimately well you're acting aren't you you know you're acting out a story like you would be for bbc radio 4 or whatever it's quite a lot of um production goes into that um i would listen to a lot of radio 4 stuff um you know just see how that's put together and there will be you know companies out there who probably um specialize in that but i know a lot of a lot of people who cast radio drama just cast off show reels um i think a voice reel itself is far more valuable if you're going to spend money on it if if you are wanting to do actual voiceover work not voice acting which would be tv commercials radio commercials um corporate work um and documentaries that's where all my money comes from in voiceover um the, the majority of money and then the voice acting stuff um, I initially got back in the day um, from people watching my reel and just seeing that I can act. And then they're like, oh, right, how are you? You know, sort of like in with character acting, how are you with um, voice acting for cartoons and stuff? Um, having a, a reel for cartoons is quite useful with, you know, lots of silly different voices on and accents and things like that. But don't put that on your main voiceover reel. It's very, very different. Um, I'd go and watch that. You might have already watched it, but I would probably, anyone interested in, in voiceover, um, go into the members area on actsonthis.tv, click on search here, you can see search at the top right there, and just uh, type in voiceover. I always spell it as one word, just type in voiceover. I know some people have split it up, and then you will find, uh, hopefully if I click, where do I click search? Do I just hit enter? You'll find a few features here you should go and watch. That one launched in a voiceover career that lasts with top voiceover agency, the voiceover gallery. That's a cracking session with my voiceover agents. These guys changed my life financially and just in terms of time freedom. Incredible, incredible people. Um, so I get all my voiceover work from. Go and watch that. Um, how to land voiceover work with Voice of the X Factor Peter Dixon's a good one. Um, getting the best voiceover training with voiceover man Peter Dixon's another good feature we've done. Um, there's actually some uh, 25% discount code for any Act On This members for Gravy for the Brain, which is a great place to get voiceover training from. Um, and then what else was there? There was, I've obviously talked about voiceover and a lot of features, but there was um, a cartoon one that I did because I did something called Timpo for BBC, uh, which was a, a kid's show. And I did, uh, yeah, if you type in Tinpo, T-I-N-P-O, Go and check this session out as well. It's particularly good for if you want to voice out for cartoons. Um, I did a show, yeah, called Timpo, where I played Timpo, like the lead little uh, guy in it. It's an animation for CBeebies. Uh, but I did it alongside Lizzie Water with Sanso, who was Horrid Henry, um, Joe Ruse, who does a lot of Dennis the Menace, and Keith Wickham, who's the fat controller in Thomas the Tank. Um, and we talk about getting into voice acting in that session there so that's definitely worth looking at before you go and do any um you know any sort of reels because they can be quite dear if you're doing them properly um definitely god i'm sorry i'm missing all these uh all these comments um sorry about that so uh sophie said to hold off on email in her office as alex yeah i can see i could i could understand why sophie would say that that doesn't honestly like don't let that apply to every casting director because that's just not that's not right sophie's obviously speaking for her own office there but i can see that being the case for Sophie because her work is so I mean she does amazing work I'm so inspired seeing Sophie's career over the last few years how it's grown like she's just a hustler has built an incredible team and has cast some of the biggest and best projects in the world over the last few years um it's been amazing to see that like the tenacity and just the guts and the courage that she's put into the her career to get where she's got is amazing but I can see that now Obviously, working on both sides of the pond, that's a bit of an issue with the uh, with the strikes right now. So I feel bad for Sophie. She must be, um, you know, sort of like oh, a lot of headaches around that. But um, there are so many offices that will, you know, just work predominantly in the UK. So I would still reach out to everyone, you know, you want to reach out to who you feel is working on UK-based projects, basically. Um Let's have a look. Uh, anything else? Anything else here? Uh, Equity would have to research issues in the UK and ballot its members before it could call a strike, says Nick. Yeah, imagine there's, you know, there's a lot of 
a lot goes into just going, I don't think they just go, right, everyone, I'm going to issue a tweet tomorrow, just get on strike. Like, there's an awful lot would go into, you know, equity actually commissioning a strike in the UK. And I honestly don't know where I would stand on it, just to be honest with you. I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I do think someone's put about AI in the chat there. I do think artificial intelligence needs legislating. Full stop. I think that could cause, you know, it could be brilliant for the industry. Um, I know particularly in voiceover, it, I mean, it could be amazing. So basically what would happen in with artificial intelligence in voiceover is through my voice, it would be fed into, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes of my voice could be fed into AI of all other voiceovers that I've done, different styles or whatever. AI could ultimately make a voice pack of me and then that would enable AI to basically be given any script and for it to read it as me. Now, it can't. it's not quite there at the moment. It can't quite emote in the way a human can emote. Um, but I imagine it won't be far off. In five years, I'm sure it will be able to do that, maybe even shorter than that. But what that could eventually lead to is me being able to work on 10 voiceover jobs in a day and not even be there. It's so ultimately they would lease like a license for my voice from my voiceover agent, just like they would do normally. They would listen to a voice reel of mine and rather than book me to go and do that voiceover in person or you know via um, a piece of software called Source Connect that enables you to connect to different studios around the world, um, you know, I would, uh, I wouldn't have to do that. They would just go, right, rather than Ross coming and do it, can we just license his voice? My agent goes, yeah, cool. It's however much it costs. Um, and then they, you know, get to ultimately feed that script into my voice pack. It then spits out the finished product for them. It sounds like me and, you know, they get what they would have got if I'd have done it in person. But I can only, there's only so many hours in the day. I can only do a few jobs a day. Um, that would open up the market for you to be able to do, you know, 20, 30, 40 jobs a day, potentially. Um, so I can see if we legislate it properly and pay is fair, that could be absolutely game changing for talented voiceover artists who are getting booked a lot. Um, so I can see AI being a blessing and a curse. <laughs> there are lots of practical positive implications, you know, and implementations of it. But that's just where we just need to get some clarity on it. And the same for you know, like you're effectively like, you know, in-person, in-vision avatar, you know, can we at some point make films with, you know, people's virtual avatars, um, but, you know, without them being there, and maybe that's a possibility, um, but those people would still have to be paid properly, you know, and fairly for using that, but maybe you could be making three or four movies at once, and that would just be impossible in real life. Um, so I don't think it's all bad. There's a lot of scaremongering going on, I think there could be, if this is used for good, and that's a big if, it could there could be some really, really good, you know, good like positives come out of this, but it just needs almost needs to sort of like someone needs to put like a a pause on it. Just just pause AI for a minute so we can all just step back, talk about it, and just figure out how we're gonna legislate it so that it doesn't get out of control. Um but it could have some great, you know, some great impl implications, definitely. Um, Mafrida says, incredible if that licensing were to happen, but totally unlikely. People's voices are already being used without them being aware of what they signed up for. Yeah, I mean, you could see that in terms of like, you know, Drake's put out two songs that he didn't even sing. Um, AI created them for him. Well, fans created them with Drake's voice in AI. Um, so, yeah, you're always going to get in everything... Um, Mafrida, you're going to get the bad actors in everything. Of course you are. You know, the internet, look what we're doing now. I think this is a good implementation of the internet. We're using it for good. You know, we're all communicating, having a nice time. We're hanging out. And this is positive. Um, the internet itself can, you know, be used for terrible things as well. Um, and you will always get that in life, right? No matter what you do. That's not the internet's fault. It's not AI's fault if people use it for bad or whatever. Um, but I do, I am just a massive believer in humanity. Like we have had... It's quite an interesting time right now, isn't it? But we've had the ability to end the world millions of times over for, what, 70 years? No one's done it yet. I really hope they don't with what's going on around the world. But I think inherently human beings are good. You know, most stuff on the internet is used for good. Um, and I would hope with AI and technological advancements that, you know, there's a lot of people in our industry that want to work properly, fairly, and we hopefully will all get together and figure out a system for that to actually take place. I don't think that any brand worth their salt, Coca-Cola are not going to rob my voice and go, right, we're going to put this on TV. And then I go, hang on a minute, that's my voice. They're not going to do that. It's just not worth it. So the real players in the game will not cheat. They just won't. Um, you know, like I think that, you know, 
it just wouldn't be worth anybody's while. I think hopefully there will be frameworks put in place where we can control it. I hope anyway. Otherwise, we're all out. Forget it. It's over. You'll, you'll come back in three weeks and this will be an avatar of me. It won't even be me. I'll be in there in my front room with my feet on the sofa and you'll all be talking to a robot. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. Like I say, I'm a, I'm a very practical optimist. I just hope good things happen. And um, And so far in the world, you know, Good has definitely prevailed. I know there's a load of shit in the world. Of course there is. But on a whole, I think, you know, we're, you know, we're all right. I think there's a lot of, everyone on here is a good person. We never rip each other off. Like, and that's the majority of our industry. Um, Let's have a look. So, yeah, Alex, you said there, you know, it's a bit like what Gary Vee said about how people opposed the internet when it first came out. Oh, my God, absolutely. You know, when this has happened throughout history, when we went from the radio to TV, People demonize the TV. Like, this is it. People are going to get square eyes. This is terrible for you. People are going to be sat down all day. And then, you know, and then, you know, when TV is great, you know, people then the, then start demonizing the internet. Oh, my God, the internet. This is going to be terrible. Oh, my God. You, you need to remember, like, people at one point, you know, Elvis shook his hips on stage and people were like, he's the devil. You know, like, with ever anything that's new comes along, People hate it. People hate change. People are afraid of it. People want to scaremonger. It's natural as human beings because, you know, we all want to keep each, keep each other protected and ourselves safe. Um, but this is happening. Ultimately, whether you like it or not, this is happening. AI is here. It's not going away. It will get more and more c- complex, more and more capable. Um, and we have to, you know, we have to roll with it ultimately. And, and like I say, in history, anytime there's been change, We've all rattled against it and then we've rolled with it and lots of good has come of it. So um, I, I just know it'll be the same this time. It will be exactly the same, I promise you. You know, of course there'll be bad actors. There are, you know, there's the dark web where you can buy weapons, drugs, all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, that's not the internet's fault. That's just human beings. That's the nature of humans. Um, you know, people will use things for good and bad, but I do believe there are more good people in the world than uh, than bad. I like to think anyway. <laughs> But there we go. Right, we've run over, folks. This has gone over 15 minutes, but thank you so much for being here. Do not forget this free training that's happening Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Actonlist.tv forward slash training. Please go get your spot. Um, there's a, roughly about 720 people now have signed up. There's only 500 places available on that Zoom call. I don't think all 720 people who have registered are going to turn up. But if you want to make sure you get through the door ultimately Saturday morning, click your Zoom link at quarter to 10. Just make sure you get in there, okay, and you'll get you'll definitely get access to the room then. But act on this.tv forward slash training. Um, go get your Zoom link uh, from there. Keep it safe. I'll remind you all anyway. I'll, if you register, I'll send you another reminder out on Friday night. I'll send you one out on Saturday morning as well. Um, but it's going to be an incredible training for anybody looking for the first TV role fast. Um, I'm going to be sharing lots of strategies that I still use to this day to land TV work regularly. So um, cannot wait to see you there. Um, I don't know whether to play you another testimonial out from the main program. Because like I say, after that first that, that training, that free training in the morning, I'm opening the doors to the full first TV roll fast track program. I wonder if I've got any other testimonials. I've got Catherine's testimonial. Let's end on this. Just another person who went through the full program, the full training last year, um, who was struggling to land TV work, who you know then implemented the blueprint and got a TV roll very, very quickly. So um, I'll finish on this. But thanks so much for being here really means the world um and if if anybody's seen you know anything tonight and you do want to do the full program you're like listen i just want to do it i don't want to attend the free training or i don't want to get on a waiting list anywhere um if you want just drop me an email ross acts on this.tv and i'll just to say thank you for being here so late on a monday night or watch on the replay um I will send you a link before I even do that free training to just register for a, a full place on the main program if you want. No pressure. I know it's a, a significant, you know, chunk of change. Um, like I say, the program will be 747 quid, um, but it is 12 months of support, 12 months of coaching. Um, and it's a proven blueprint now. Like everyone who has landed a TV job through this program has at least doubled their money, if not more. Um, so it's legit and I'm super legit and I will go above and beyond and do everything that I can for you to make this work and like I say I need you to do the work with me I can't do it for you I can't go and do the audition for you (laughs) um but I can absolutely you know both myself and Petch the community manager can absolutely give you as much support as as you know as we possibly can basically um to see you uh to see you through it but thank you everybody really appreciate you 
Um, and here's Catherine's experience. Yeah, Catherine's another fast tracker. Um, here's where she was at before she did the program. But I'll see you Saturday morning. Well, I'll see you all tomorrow night, won't I? For the session with Helen Kelly uh, for members of AtsOnThis.tv. If you're looking for an agent, be on that one. Uh, right, I'm waffling now. I'll speak to you in a bit. Bye for now. Before I did first TV Real Fast Track, I wasn't getting any castings. I'd left the business for quite a while for personal reasons, and then I'd come back into it for about two years, and I, I wasn't getting any castings. I didn't understand why. Um, so I wanted to take a bit more ownership. I wanted to uh, see how people see me, um, see what, yeah, how I'm portraying myself in this industry, and um, so I can see where I fit and get to know it a bit better. So yeah, I was feeling pretty unsure before I started. The most obvious and biggest result that I've got is getting a part in Emmerdale. So I auditioned for three different roles and ended up getting the biggest one, which was a social worker, Beth White. Even kicked off the episode. Um, everybody was so lovely on Emmerdale. I would love to go back. It's such a friendly bunch of people, every single person there. Um, the other things that I've learned is more about me. So how I portray myself in my headshots and my showreels, tell the same story. And in doing that, it's giving me loads more confidence as well. So now I'm firing out emails to casting directors and not even thinking twice about it. I wanted to know more about how people see me. Um, I, I know how I think people see me, but that's not always the actual case. So they do this module called Day Player Diagnosis, which is where you look at your headshots and you look at your showreel and you decipher what kind of day player roles that you might play. I don't think there's anyone else that does that. And so I really wanted to know that. And that's one of the big selling points for me. Also, the fact that you're in this community with people on the same journey as you. So you're, you're sharing each other's triumphs and you're helping each other out. And I think that's really rare. A lot of other things are just classes and then you leave. There's a lot of mystery about how to uh, email casting directors, or there was for me anyway. And there's this one module that's called Email Excellence, and it really demystifies that for you. So it makes it not scary anymore. And now I'm really happy to email uh, casting directors at any time. And then linking that with the, uh, the things that you found out about your day player in the day player diagnosis module just means that it's very succinct and you're saying the same thing in the right way. My concerns about signing up were obviously the money. It is a lot of money that we don't just have lying around. So that was a, a big concern. But on the flip side of that, I was also not getting anywhere already. And I was really worried that if I, what if I did this and I still didn't get anywhere, then, then what would happen? So I had two concerns, the money and potential stalemate for where I already am. So that's why I had to go full in. I knew that if I, I had to try this 100%, give all that I had and see if it works. And it did, because I recouped all the money plus more from that one job on Emmerdale. I think what surprised me most was what I learned about myself on the course. So when everybody was putting up their headshots and giving each other what kind of roles that they thought they would play, the kind of roles that, some, that people were telling me that I, they thought my headshot showed weren't always necessarily roles that I related myself to, which was madness. Because like things like a professional person, I was I still had this kind of chip on my shoulder about being very working class and didn't really see myself in that way, yet that's how others did. And so I think by doing this, it was like, hang on a minute, I am actually a professional. <laughs> this this is true. So I think what surprised me is how much I learned about myself, how much I learned about how I portray myself to others and how I'm viewed by others. And then that's just really given me a lot more confidence. If you're on the fence, then I would say, get off the fence and sign up. <laughs> like this is, it seems like a lot of money, but you do get that back as long as you stick to it. Stick to it, go all in. And not only do you find out more about yourself, do you get confidence to write to casting directors, you get a wonderful community that you're part of. So I would definitely say join up, do it and do it now. Just so I didn't show that, just so I didn't show that URL again at the end, I just had to cut that off there. But, um, so oh, hang on. So Let me close my laptop there. Um, have a great one, guys. I will catch up with you soon on uh, on Saturday morning, particularly. Act on this.cv forward slash training if you want to be there. Until then, it really is this time. Bye for now.